opening the game, and then it does all the. We live? We are live. And as usual, I have to f manually go and search for it on my tablet. What? Holy crap, what? I can set basic info from all of my videos on YouTube. I've been doing this for like three and a half years and I just... Do you ever have moments where you're like, as a creator, I suck? <laughs> <laughs> like, how did I... I don't know. Hey, I didn't. Hey, I didn't know about scene collection on OBS until last week, and it was Flair that told me about it. I'm still getting used to scene collection. Like, See, I had. I literally had all of my scenes for all of my shows in one single scene collection. And then um, Flair literally said, "What? Why? Um, why don't you break up your shows into scene collections?" And I was like, "Okay, that 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 probably does make sense. Why was I not doing that before?" <laughs> yes, yeah, so now I do it. The llama is in chat. What's up, llama? Llama, llama, mad at mama. We, we, we got lucky, we got a good night for, uh, for the show, because there's uh, no GAC, it's GAC Defence Day. Oh yeah, no kidding. Are have you, you set your defence, Thaddeus? I have not. I, have. I won! My last GAC! Let's get it out of the way now, because we can't talk about it during the show. Ask Lama if she can hear. Lama, well, Lama can you hear me? It says can't hear that, I just want to make sure. Speak, Thaddeus. Speak, or forever hold your me? peace. Can you hear me? Are, are we too? There were too I'm quiet. Super quiet. Hmm. Interesting. Turn up, des turn up desktop audio. Turn up the desktop. I just audio. whacked it all the way up compared to what it was before. That's what she said. Or they saying that? Yeah. Should I turn up my game? No, no. You're okay. you're at you're at the exact same level to me with uh, Neil. Okay. So. Yeah. Grandpa turned up turned turned up his hearing aid. Okay. It might just be this. It might just be the countdown. It might be the media source over the countdown, and that's why. Because obviously there's there's music going over the over our voices. So uh, it could it could it, it, this, the, it could I potentially be that as well. But uh, anyway, we've got a minute left, so everybody goes silent. Silence.
Hello there, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Escape Pod Castaways content creator presents the Escape Pod Geeking Out with Going Nerdy. My God, that's a mouthful, but I love saying it. How are you guys doing tonight? Wonderful. I'm that it, just wonderful. Just I'm wonderful. For the, for the future here. Um... You know, it, it, th this is going to be a fun second episode, and uh, yeah, I mean, w there's a lot of stuff going on in the castaways. Um, you know, first off, one thing we do want to mention, uh, for those who watch all of our stuff, including this, uh, if you are a fan of LEGO Legacy Heroes Unboxed, uh, there will be a host change in this upcoming episode. Uh, Neil hasn't had much time to be able to play. Um, it hasn't gripped him like other uh, other games have. And so with that being said, um, I am very, very pleased to announce that the new co-host of the Escape Pod cast Lego Legacy Heroes Unboxed will be none other then the llama. The llama! <laughs> Yay! Yeah. So we are uh, we are very, very excited for uh, um, for this transition. Uh, I will do the podcast uh, absolutely right uh, because we are going to be uh, uh, llama and I are very invested in Lego where Neil not necessarily. It's, it's not that I don't dislike the game. I don't hate the game. I don't mega loathe or despise the game. I'm just indifferent. And, you know, I'm, I'm running four swagger. <gasps> Damn it! See, You're going to the to, naughty corner, Neil. We need to have a button above everyone so that when someone says the word, the magic word, like balls fall from the ceiling. <laughs> said the magic word! Ah! Neil, Neil has said the word. He's now gone to the naughty corner. He's in timeout. Thaddeus, <laughs> welcome to Geeking Out with Going Nerdy. I'm glad you. you're here, especially because, you know, without you, it would just be us geeking out. Which I I think would still be fun. I mean, everyone loves a good geek out, and it's, I, I'm just happy to be included <laughs> and not picked last. So um, what, what I have coming up on the show today is I'm going to be talking about uh, something new we're going to start on Wednesday nights um, here on this Twitch channel. Or, or, well, for those who are watching the show on your channel, over on the Escape Pod Twitch channel, uh, yeah. on Wednesday nights until my trivia night starts back up, uh, Neil and I are going to be playing Star Wars Imperial Assault through Tabletop Simulator. So that should be Ooh. a lot of fun. Uh, uh, if you want to learn how to play, the tutorial video, or the, me teaching Neil how to play, will be... We'll be doing the tutorial mission next week, or not next week, tomorrow, um, tomorrow. in this next, the next time that you guys see us. Um, what, what do you have coming up on the show? So I'm going to talk, I've talked, I've kind of fallen in love with this new author. Um, and he's not a new author at all. Um, but I, he, he's written of the books that I've listened to. He's, he's, I'm on, nine of 10 books um each book is individual and and i just want to talk about this because i i love it it's so much fun and so that's what i'm going to be discussing all right neil what do you have on the docket for today i i just i just want to talk about some more of the mando speculation stuff because it, it doesn't doesn't seem to be a week goes by where there's not some kind of speculation on um, on the Mando, um, which a, a kind of ties into um, the, the 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 end of the clone. You know, it's we will watch the clone. Just you know, it's, we're just going to have a good old speculation fest. On why um, is everybody calling you Grandpa Neil? And like like Flair calls you Grandpa uh, Neil. Now Llama's calling the Llama. It was the Llama. It was the Llama that started it. 
It's the hair that comes just above the ears. It, it was the llama that started. Back in my day, we 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 used modems. We used telephone modems. Fifty six <laughs> kilobits per second. <laughs> Yeah. But then, yes, so we're gonna have we're gonna have a good old we're gonna have a good old fashioned uh, we're gonna have a good old fashioned speculation city regarding the Mando because there's there's more names coming in and and this that and the other and it's just gonna be just good old fashioned speculation. Well, that definitely sounds fun. So guys, uh, we're gonna throw to a quick break and then we're gonna geek out right here on the Escape Pod, geeking out with going nerdy. <laughs> Hello friends, this is Thaddeus from Going Nerdy, and I approve this message, and am compensated for signups for this service. The world's largest audiobook library is at your fingertips, and the Escape Pod Castaways want you to try it for free. Head on over to escapepodcastaways.com and click the Going Nerdy offer button to claim a free audiobook and two Audible Originals. Cancel any time, and it's absolutely free to sign up. Check out Audible and support the Escape Pod Castaways, all for free. See Audible website for details. Restrictions may apply. Are you a member of Team Paul or Team Neil? Maybe you prefer story time with the llama, or dabble in the buttery side of the force with Biscuit Weasel. Or maybe you like the Escape Pod talents from down under, like Heinze and Scotty. No matter who you support, you can get one of my designs from the Escape Podcast merch store. Just go to escapepodcastaways.com, click on the merch link, and it will take you to the Tee Public site where you can support me, Mrs. Anthony, also known as Critty K. Also be sure to check out the Mrs. Anthony Shirts channel on the Escape Podcasts Discord server weekly to vote for my latest shirts in the Design Derby on Woot. Links for both of these are down below. Thank you for supporting the Escape Podcast. <laughs> Ah, welcome back. So this is the format that you use. Obviously, you've got top, middle, and my bottom bitch I'm underneath me. Yes, <laughs> you are. You know it. You know you are, and you love it. And so uh, obviously, all of the a... various different bits and pieces you know. that we'll talk about will be to our right. <laughs> and I thought I'd have a little bit of fun <laughs> with what is what is slideshowing to our right at the moment. That's not yeah, going to yeah. be there much longer, though. So. Uh... <laughs> uh, uh, Okay. Apparently, we're we're selling ad space. So, I mean, <laughs> we we could sell ad space on all of our foreheads right now. I'm just yes, saying. I know. Yeah. You know, your ad goes here. <laughs> so uh, yes. So who's who's first up then? Who's first up? I uh, I was gonna ask you that. Who who do you? Bad. You, you can go first, buddy. All right. So I so here's the thing. I'm always looking for a good. Um, a good story, right? Any any good story, because you, like you you're going through your day, and like I spent three and a half hours today in my in my uh, yard, like cleaning and mowing and and all, that, and it just takes so much time. And, and you're all, I'm always looking for something good to listen to. And outside of the occasional awesome podcast, um, you you run out of stuff to listen to. And and I I love zombies. I love the supernatural. If you don't know, I am a huge fan of of uh, uh, what's the word? Not speculation, uh, conspiracy theory, right? I love conspiracy theories. Like aliens exist. They do. The government's hiding it from us. It's just the thing. And as I was going through a like probably late December, I. I stumbled upon a book called Patient Zero. And this book is about a detective from Philadelphia who is gifted in languages. And he's on a task force and he hears the keywords on the task force and he gets called into this um, to this raid, right? And, you know, terrorism, gunfight, and, you know, he kills a bunch of people, so on and so forth, right? So then he gets to this after briefing, right? He's sitting in this room with, with this man who's eating cookies, okay? 
And that's like a staple of this one of these main characters, this this guy. He always has vanilla wafers near him. <laughs> like always. Okay. It's super weird. I and, and it's never explained. I'm nine books in and and still nothing. Right? This this dude who eats the cookies, you never know like about his past. There's hints, but you never know. And so like this dude's asking this this first guy questions and the first guy his name is joe ledger right any Uh, relation to heath no not that i know of uh now so he's like tell us about all all of your thoughts and and feelings and whatever about uh the supernatural things that can't be explained and and whatever and so he ends up putting him in this room with one of these terrorists that he killed except that he's not dead or better yet he is dead and is back from the dead now this first book is about a a com- uh, i don't want to give it away but essentially there is a um a terrorist plot to release a zombie virus in the united states <laughs> and and like what's interesting about this is this is not the typical zombie story, right? It goes through and it, it gives you some kind of uh, science behind the zombies, right? A lot of zombie stories are like, well, it just happened or, you know, meteorites or, you know, whatever. Um, but this actually gives like a scientific backing for, oh, this is how it's done, right? And without giving a ton of detail, it's this really fascinating book and series about this guy, Joe Ledger, who not only comes into what's called the Department of Military Sciences, uh, a, a new government agency that is like black ops, but what they do is they fight what can't be fought. Okay, so so the first one, Patient Zero, is zombies. The second one. Um, the Dragon Factory is all about gene splicing and, and uh, creating genetic codes. And uh, it, it even talks about how, like, Hitler uh, was doing, like, gene therapy type stuff during the Nazi times. And so it takes actual stuff and runs with it. Okay. okay. Yeah, no, no, that, that is the, 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 the Hitler and the Nazis were obsessed with mixing oh science God. with the occult. Oh, yeah. It's because they were crazy people. Yeah. Crazy anyone evil who's people. Willing to, anyone who's willing to commit mass genocide has something wrong with them. Yeah. Now, yeah. now you asked me, Nev, when I shared these images with you. Yeah. What's the deal with Seth MacFarlane? Why What's is the that deal in with there? Seth MacFarlane? I don't know why. But I, as I'm listening to it, right, and I am, I'm listening to it, it's an audiobook, right? Um, the narrator, coupled with the voice of this main character, Joe Ledger, just absolutely reminds me of Seth MacFarlane. So imagine the most bad A, like, uncompromising, like, super... So, I don't know, it's not super scientist, super, he's not even a spy, but like off the books, deep cover operative, right? Whatever, I don't know. Um, and imagine that being Seth MacFarlane. <laughs> like there is moments of absolute humor, like just hands down hilarity. And then there's moments of like emotionalness that you're like, oh, and I fully believe that Seth MacFarlane can play the range of like hilarious and then, you serious. know, whatever serious, right? Um, now, I know, I've never I post- seen him in a serious role. Well, no, I, I haven't either. <laughs> we we um, sort of have, in a way. Sit, what, have, I mean, oh, are it, you talking about the Orville? I am talking about the Orville yeah. because he has his. Mm, I sp- he yeah, has all right. I sp- there are those moments moment. during the Orville, yeah. Yeah, but he has. So, it's mostly comedic, but there is some seriousness to the whole situation, especially at the end. I, I'm waiting for you know, I'm waiting for the Orville to return on Hulu. Yeah, 
Yeah. So, no, no. That, that, he does have the. St- you, you've got that. You've got the Seth MacFarlane moment, and then you've got the Star Trek moment, which is the yeah. you know the serious you know the Picard moment. Yeah. So it's got the comedy moment, and then it's got the Picard moment, hasn't it? Where it goes, where yeah. he's all talk and all business. Old school Picard, not 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 this new yeah. crap. Not not new Picard. Not new Picard. Not old Picard. Picard. You know, Captain Jean Luc Picard. Not. No. Hmm. Okay, so tell me about Kill Switch. Why why so, did you prominently feature just Kill Switch? So for this is the book that I'm listening to now. Okay. And and so here here's the thing. I mean, and, and the Joe Ledger series. So first off, the guy who writes this, his name is Jonathan Maberry. Not Mayberry, Maberry. Right? I like pronounced it Maybury. When Barry. I first saw it, I thought Maybury. Yeah, I did too. Um and so I'm, this is my current listen. Now, um, essentially, so, <laughs> okay, the, the Joe Ledger and crew. So there's two other guys, uh, Tops and, Top and Bunny. So this like old, grizzled, like, uh, like African-American soldier who's been through like all kinds of stuff. Um, he, I say old and grizzled. He's 46. And then you've got like this young surfer type guy and his name's Bunny um, because his last name is Rabbit and his first name is Harvey. Um, So Harvey Rabbit, Bunny Rabbit, right? And anyways, so they go down, (laughs) they go down to Antarctica because they were, they were shipped there for, I mean, there's like an experimental lab that's not responding. Um, and they're not sure what's going on and everything. So first off, everything about this book's pointing to uh, HP Lovecraft. So Cthulhu and, oh, yeah. and, and other things. And so like, and I don't know Lovecraft that is next on my list. Um, uh, and, jo- Joe Jr. asks uh, if it's Jack Ryan esque. Yes, it is. So, so here's the thing. When I, when I say it is, um, Imagine Seth MacFarlane. Seth MacFarlane, it, so imagine the Orville with no one else telling jokes but Seth MacFarlane. Okay? So you have a very sarcastic main character and everyone else is like super intense, super like uh, good at their jobs, right? Um, it, it's, it's really, really good. Um, so I, I just got to say that I don't know entirely there are silly moments, but they're few and far between. There's, it's, it's usually humor, you know, dialogue that's, that's, that's driven, but sometimes they run into things that are a little awkward. Um, when they get to, <laughs> when they get to Antarctica, they, they're not met by anybody, right? Which, you know, red flag, you know, you're flying into Antarctica, the scientific team doesn't come out to meet you. Kind of a weird thing, right? Um, they get to Antarctica and they go in and they're, they're immediately attacked by a giant monster. But after they killed the monster, they take a step back and look at it. And what is it? It is a prehistoric penguin. And <laughs> they were attacked by a prehistoric penguin. And like, it's this really weird moment, but then it's like, oh, you were attacked by a penguin. You're kind <laughs> of, you know, and then it's, there's some humor in it, and it, but it's, what's it's just a really interesting story it's not overly scientific but the the way that these i think complex scientific terms are are created and broken down are very fascinating there's a lot of black ops black book type uh stories that if you're familiar with any conspiracy theory type stuff um it is i mean it's right there um they they he draws heavily on that type of stuff but he also draws heavily on um he he uses politics he uses he just he couples a lot of really interesting things now um this main character is or this series he's written other spin-off series and he's written um you know many uh short stories for this character and i've listened to a number of those uh, through my local library and and it's it is absolutely fascinating. Like I cannot 
it's it's funny because like my wife read the first listened to the first book or read the first book i, I don't know um and she's like oh i hated him he's he's an a-hole and i was like <laughs> he is an a-hole he's he's a total jerk but it's amazing the way that he his jerkiness gets played out it's it's so good so good is he like this a, is actually so, see see um um run dmv put in like jack ryan meets resident evil i i'm thinking is it more jack ryan meets um fox Mulder? it's like a cross between x files yeah. Yeah. and uh, a cross between the x files and the jack ryan novels yeah um so you've got and, your you've got your seriousness and your politics of jack ryan you know the serious you know but then you've yeah. got the 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 dark humor of Fox Mulder, you know, and the conspiracy theorist and, you know, oh, aliens kidnapped my sister when I was a kid. And <laughs> oh, and there's there's a book that's all about aliens and spacecraft. Um, there's there's another book. So so Patient Zero and then Code Zero. Um, Code Zero is like, I think if I'm, I looked at the image, seventh from the beginning, but it's kind of a direct sequel to the first one. So it's still zombie related but it plays heavily on social media. Um, it plays heavily on like how virality works online. Um, and it really taps into game culture, which is fascinating. Hmm. I mean, it's, it's, it's absolutely wonderful. Um, there's, there's main characters who are um, just total douchebags. There's, Oh, um the the main scientist the q if you will of like the 007 q of this organization oh his name is i want to say sulu or something like that um it's it's uh woo oh who it's it's doctor who he's a doctor oh, and his, and He's Asian, and so is his. He's a Doctor Who, and he's a huge like uh, nerd, and so he's. And it's really funny. And then there's the computer people who you know who run you know the business, the computer, and everything. Um, and one of the main characters' name is Bug, and then his second in command is named Yoda. <laughs> And and it's and and it's funny because like everyone's got a nickname and in every book that this character is mentioned, he points out this character's real name is Yoda, and it's because his parents shouldn't have had children. He also has a sister named Leia. Like every book that he's mentioned, and he's been mentioned in like four of the of the seven books that I've read, and it's like it's so fun. Are these are, and, these, are these these are like his team members or something? Yeah, like these the are team members. And so members. it's it's essentially the Department of Military Science is essentially the CIA run by someone who doesn't answer to the president of the United States, which is awesome cuz he always this this main guy, it's the cookie guy. Oh, um, like the um like the like the, the like the group from Hellboy. Like that yes. government agency yeah. from Hellboy that are just that, they, they've just unto their own, they're just their own their own thing. Exactly. And so it's it's really just a fascinating series of stories. And what's fascinating about it is you wouldn't think that it's oh, you wouldn't think a book series like this would would lift you up, right? Or teach you things, right? But there are moments because of what they they dive into, there are more moments that they explore humanity what it means to be human and what it means to be a person. And, and sometimes they just come out of left field and it's like, what? Oh my gosh. I, I need to check myself. You know, it's, I love it. Like this is an amazing series. Um, the last one that's on the list is dogs of war. Uh, and I think that one just came out, I think either this last year or the year before, um, so he might be working on others, but I know he's working on like other spinoffs that include these characters and it's just so fun. Hmm. Um, he has another main series, this Jonathan Maberry, um, about like, that is, that is hardcore zombies. 
Um, and that's one I'm going to look into next after this run is all out, but um, it's, it is awesome. It is fun storytelling. It is absolutely great. I actually on Twitter the other day, I re I, I, after I finished um, predator one, uh, which was the last book, but um, I, 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 I showed a picture when I'm done with these books, I post them on Instagram and you know, then it get it gets shared to Twitter immediately. And, and I was like, how is this not a movie yet? How is this not a, a television series of some kind? Cause this would be amazing. And it got out, you know, I, I, sorry, I tagged, I tagged him and Jonathan Maberry actually was like, yeah, I know. Right. And I was like, what? The author <laughs> actually saw my tweet. This is so cool. It was awesome. It was, it was like a really neat moment for me. Um, I geeked out a little bit. Just well, it sounds like lot. you got like, the, the thing is you've got shows like, uh, you've got shows like fringe librarians that there's so yeah. much that there's so much saturation with, uh, with, um, supernaturally you know government conspiracy type stuff at the moment that maybe something as good as this maybe it'd be maybe it'd be worth waiting so that we can you know maybe they'll do another phase of werewolf vampire crap you know for the teens for the millennials and then you know 10 years from now we'll go back to you know government conspiracy yeah. stuff and then they'll be like right quick make a tv series out of these books before yeah. you know everybody else floods the market with crappy cheap knockoffs of conspiracy yeah. theory type shows because they come they go in phases they come and go in phases don't they yeah true true and 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 i this is one that i would love to see done but i'd love to see done right you who, know who who and, would who who do you picture in your who do you picture in your head playing the the lead role do you picture seth mcfarlane or no, do you just I, see his voice i see his voice see i his hear voice? his voice I, it is absolutely Seth MacFarlane's voice. If not Seth MacFarlane, um, I could see like Ryan Reynolds doing it. Um, this would be right up his alley. <laughs> like the, and, and it's, it's great. I got to say like, he goes through a series of, um, a series of, of teammates, you know, cause dangerous, but in one of the books he gets a dog and <laughs> it's, and his name is Ghost, and he's a giant white dog. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, you had to be either reading and or watching Game of Thrones when when you were putting this together. <laughs> um, but it's it's so much fun. I absolutely love it. So Seth MacFarlane, if not Seth MacFarlane, Ryan Reynolds, hands down. Okay. So, All right. You want to tell people where they can... Um... Read these books or hear these yes, books? Yes, you can read these books. And every time you do, there's a link uh, that I believe is on the Escape Podcast website. I don't. Is it on? It, uh, it, the website is just escapepodcastaways.com. No the. Okay. No the. Escapepodcastaways.com. And you can click the Going Nerdy offer and you'll, you'll, you can, you know, yes. get one of those books in audio form to see if you like it. Yep. If Thank you, you don't ever. like it, I, so here's the thing. If you don't like it, I want you to tell me because hmm. it's not for everybody. Of course it's not for everybody, but I'm, I would love to hear your opinion. Um, and, and so try it out. If you click on a link for this audible, this audible offer, you get one free book, but then you also get audible originals and stuff that are, that are actually really pretty good. Um, do it for a month. If you don't like it for a month, quit. You don't have to pay anything. Um, it's it's a great offer uh but the book's yours one way or the other the book is yours it is oh, it's so much fun guys i love it i do and i i actually i was telling these guys during the break that um typically i have a one month one one book per month subscription and because of this book and because i know there's two books that are left this one and one more um i upped my subscription audible for a premium account so I can get both books <laughs> and listen to them. Uh, and I'm sure I'll get the new Queen Shadow book that's coming out for Star Wars as well. Anyways, check it out. It is it is awesome. And and I I will say, I will say, yes, it helps support the channel. Go to your library. If if you can't, if you if you can't do an audible, if you can't like do an audible account, 
go to your library and see if these are there. I know that my local library has these books on audiobook. And most libraries have uh, an online feature that you can have an app, you can download it to. Um, I think someone's outside my house or outside my basement. Um, <laughs> but go to your library, right? And, and, and try stuff out because don't pay for something. Try it for free. That's how much I love reading. That's how much I think these books are worth. Do it for free. Yeah, help me out if you want to. But <laughs> get a free book. It's great. Awesome. So, yeah. I'll stop talking for about this. So Thaddeus is all geeked out. <laughs> I, uh, I'm all geeked out. You're all geeked out. Well, I was a good geeking out that. Yeah. You 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 did get very animated and very excited about your book. These books, they're awesome. And it's this and it's conspiracy. You do love your conspiracy theory stuff, I don't do. you? I do. You do love your conspiracy theory stuff, don't you? Yeah. Uh, we, we've Ancient talked conspiracy theory stuff on. before. You like, I know you like your conspiracy theories. I do. Okay, Paul, it's your turn uh, to geek out. It's my turn to geek out. Well, um, there's a Star Wars, which we all know that all of us here love, um, has licensed tabletop games to a company called Fantasy Flight Games. Of those games, um, there is a, a turn-based grid strategy game it plays like an rpg it it has a campaign it has expansions um lots of lots of just fun uh, uh fun to be had in this um and it's called imperial assault you know there are it, it's a little daunting at first, when you get into it, as you'll see tomorrow, Neil. <laughs> I'm crapping myself. Uh, but uh, usually the heroes win the tutorial, okay? So don't worry. That's okay. That, 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 that gives me warm, fuzzy feeling. Yes. So the, uh, um, the game is set up to where one player plays as the Imperial, the, the entire Empire. That would be including, you. Yeah, that, and that will be me because it should be the more experienced player that's playing as the Imperials. And then you can have up to four. You can have up to four people playing, um, playing different heroes that are fighting against the Empire. Um, as, as you can see on some of these images, Boba Fett's in there, Thrawn's in there along with Death Troopers. You've got uh, uh, you've Vader. got J Jabba is it? Vader's in Vader's in the first uh, in the core set. <laughs> yeah, Vader's definitely in the core set. Um, but it's got so many iconic characters, and you do like Rebels, right, Neil? Yeah, yeah, I like Rebels. Okay, the entire Phoenix Squadron is in this game. Oh yeah, nice. But Sweet. they're in an expansion, so Oof. I'm going to need you to get. I need you to. Take I need to get there. good first. What's that? I need to get good first. You need to get good first, and then we'll go on on that. There are. <laughs> it, it's kind of funny that uh, Run DMV says dibs on the neutral tag. I get Hondo. Hondo <laughs> is in this game. What? Oh, look at Thaddeus. What? You want to play now, don't you, Thad? I do. Yes. Um, a lot of the, a lot of, basically, um, it, it kind of takes place. In a I galaxy far, say, far away? <laughs> it, it does take place in a galaxy far, far away. But it, it has two phases, and, and there's a little bit of timeline warping if you uh, if you just play off the cuff and you throw different uh, um, throw different expansions into it all. But if you if you play the certain campaign, one of them there's a there's a mission where you have to you, you basically get double crossed by Hondo. Ah. 
<laughs> awesome. So, and then you could get him as an ally, or you could get him as a sworn enemy. <laughs> Uh, I mean, this is this is a lot of fun, and I really, really. Uh, so, why did I r- reveal that? Because you don't know what happens. You don't That's know true. how you become his sworn enemy or his friend. Mm. And it's also well, the first. I mean, you could you player. could give him a chest. You could give him a chest full of um, glowstone. That that might make him a friend. <laughs> or you could make fun of his mother, his sweet dear mother, as he yeah. Always or talking. you could make yeah, or you could make fun of his mummy. Yeah. So why did I reveal it? It's the first mission of of the storyline that involves Hondo. So no no harm, no foul. Uh, <laughs> but you can get the entire Phoenix Squadron. You can get them as allies. It's I. I can't say more without spoiling some of the other uh, some of the other stuff. Yeah, and I haven't played it yet. He's got to teach me how to play this yet. And, and the the thing about this is Neil doesn't know what the characters do, what the heroes do, or anything like that. And I completely I, clueless, no idea. I think, I think you said that you're going to leave it up to the viewers and the listeners. Of- yes. I'm going to leave it up to the viewers. So if you come in, if you tune in tomorrow, you will get to pick my heroes. But I do have two conditions. Condition one is you're only allowed to pick the hot chicks. And condition two is one of my characters has to be a Wookiee. So I want a Wookiee and some hot chicks. And apparently one of the characters is a a female Twi'lek. So um, just be sure to pick her. A female force using a female force using Twi'lek. So yeah, really, really hot chick. I hope she's blue. She blue. She is blue. Oh, yeah. I love the blue ones. The blue ones are hot. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I like the green ones as well. And the red ones are kind of nice. But, you know, I, I love the blue ones. Mm, you <sighs> Give me some Give me some I, uh, Ayala Sakura any day of the week. Yeah. Yeah. He is awesome. Daddy likey blue toilets. <laughs> yeah. Flair points out. So if they have to follow the rules in order, does it have to be a hot female Wookiee? Uh, no, yes. no, 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 no. Hot female. No, the hairy. Wookiee, just a, a separate Wookiee, and then hot females. But there, there, there are some of the good uh, soldiers that there's guy soldiers that are amazing in this game. Yeah, but you know, I, 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 I'll care. I'll care more about them if they're hot chicks. What if it looked like Rio? Oh, Rio. if it no, to, if it looks like Rick, totally go. Yeah, if it's if it's Rio, totally Rio. All right. So if it's good. Rio, if it's Rios, totally Rios. Well, I'll maybe, have an, maybe give me an, if, like, if they look like Rios, I'll have an army of them. Screw the women. Maybe you could use <laughs> the Mandalorian, uh, uh, the Mandalorian Davos. Yeah. There's also a Mandalorian female in it. Is there a Mandalorian? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, all right. Okay. So everybody just, yeah. You're... Yeah. Everybody what? just, just come so and watch tomorrow and pick my look characters for me. Once you play the game tomorrow, look at the characters, see what you like. There's ranged there. You know, I don't actually, I don't know if there's any females that are melee. I'd be, I'd, I'd be careful with these with these rules that you're uh, placing on your character choices. As long as they look good, <laughs> you know. <laughs> What's that, Thaddeus? They're limitations. He's putting they're... limitations. Yeah, on I am. I'm, I'm creating limits. You know, I don't just want to go for the best. You know, because I have absolutely no idea about these people. I want to build characters. All... You know, I'm going to create. Okay characters and backstories and it, it helps if i like them so if they're they have, hot chicks they have backstories yeah they, but then i'm gonna embellish on those backstories. backstories yeah they, they of course they'll have re- they'll have rebel backstories but then i'm gonna embellish on them you know especially if they're you know a force wielding blue twillet so, okay so the, the imperial player in this game gets a book and if I went into the other room and I got the the uh, the the all of the books, it's a binder in page sleeves that's about yay thick. 
Holy cow. It's about half as thick as my head, dude. And you've got a big head. <laughs> and I do have a big head. <laughs> okay, okay. That's fine. Uh, so there, uh, but the Imperial player has the book and certain things, when you accomplish certain tasks in the missions, they all, uh, it, it triggers something else. So there okay. is a story behind all of this. Can so the truly... can the force wielding blue Twilek chick fall in love with me? No, no. So I can't be like dashing and rescue her. No, and, you know, this is this is not Mass Effect. No, all right, You're man. Playing as the hero, you are playing the heroes. You're not <laughs> playing a unique character. Oh. And then okay, all, all right then. Well then, if I can't have the force wielding blue Twilek, then nobody can. No. Well. Uh, you could play as the force wielding blue Twilight. I want to play the hot chick. I want to have the hot chick. <laughs> so can I can I help can I help establish the embellishment for Nev's character? Yeah, here? yeah, go sure. ahead. Go, sure, all, go ahead. I'm gonna snack on all out. of the real quick. All of the the hot chicks that Nev is describing uh, will have had a run in with a dashing scoundrel. Uh, from the inner rim, right? He has that that you know definitely Coruscanti upper class accent. Snob. Um, snob. Yeah. Well, he has the accent, um, but then he has has left the mid world, or he's left home, right, the motherland, um, and had traveled across the galaxy. And and these women are are. Uh, always touched by his experiences, their experiences with him. Typically, they, he saves their lives. Uh, and and as, as noble and honest as, as this man is, he never, you know, never takes advantage, always leaves them uh, wanting more. Uh, is it Captain Rios? I was going to say it was Nev. <laughs> yes, me. <laughs> yeah, this is the embellishment Nev has to yeah. add. So uh, I yeah, mean, so, clearly so I'm, I'm looking. I'm I'm, I'm really really I'm 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 all fired up. I'm all hyped up. I'm looking forward to this now. I'm really 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 looking forward to this. Now. No, it, I, I'm best doing uh, my homework, Blair, hadn't I? He sent me Blair, homework. An, ast an astromech is is not correct. You're at, you're talking. You are wanting a protocol droid for <laughs> someone to show somebody where they touch someone. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, yes. So I've got, I've got like Paul gave me like eight pages of stuff to read. I have to read, so I've got homework. Awesome. And it's so, got pictures uh, yeah. in there. You he like couldn't, pictures? Couldn't, 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 couldn't it give me a video to watch. It gave me I, pages of text. Find, there are videos on how to learn how to play. Okay, then I might watch a video then. There you go. So Flair, you've got no excuse. Karate Kid Part One, Karate Kid Part Two, and then seasons one and two of um. Um, Cobra Kai. Oh, 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 I was gonna say, I, I, I would th you would not believe that I was speaking to somebody earlier on that had never seen Karate Kid Part One, Two, or watched either of season one or two of Cobra Kai. <laughs> <gasps> Don't, <laughs> Thaddeus. What's what's that? What's that game we play all the time? What's that game we play all the time? You know, the Star Wars one? What's that game? What, what is it? What, 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 you know, what's that game we play all the time? He's, he's trying to put you in timeout. No. <laughs> I can't believe you haven't watched. Okay. I, no, I'm, you, Paul, finish, finish, finish up talking about uh, this. I, I was going to say, I'm, you I'm taking you, does it count if I saw yeah. the one? Does it count if I saw the one with Little Bow Wow? Oh, my God. <laughs> God, that's the <laughs> reboot. That's the re that's that's I didn't that's, see it. that's I Will didn't. Smith's son and Jackie Chan. Now Jackie Chan yeah. did save it, but no, um, it's not the same. I it, didn't see Ralph, that one. It's Ralph Macchio, the Karate no. Kid. Oh my <laughs> God! Everybody else in chat, you've seen Karate Kid, right? Did they make a second? You're just winding me up now, Run DMV. <laughs> There's a one, then they made a two, then they made a three. I'll forgive you for not watching three. 
and then they did one with not Hillary Duff, Hillary Swank, as <laughs> as and they did, a, and that was Hil- just that was that was like the Karate Kid, the Next Generation, and that was just terrible. Hillary Duff as a Karate Kid. No, I not think. Hillary Duff. It was Hillary Swank. I think it was I Hillary know, Swank. But it would have been better with Hillary Duff. <laughs> I can't believe you have. Cobra Kai is like the only good thing that YouTube ever did as an original. But you can't watch them. You can't watch them without having first watched Karate Kid and Karate Kid Part Two. Yurtis says he's done karate on a kid. Does that count? No, that doesn't it depends count. On how oh hard my god, can. I'm surrounded by people that have never watched the Karate Kid. This is ridiculous. <laughs> it, it, it must have been much, much bigger in England than it was here in the no, U.S. No, it's huge. It, it, oh my it's, god, just uh, no, just no. Oh my god, yes. they're so so movies. That's like telling somebody, "Have yes. you ever seen yes. Beverly Hills Ninja with Chris Farley?" No, you, no, you, you cannot mouth. compare Beverly Hills Ninja to the Karate Kid. True, yes, Beverly Beverly Hills Ninja is an amazing film. And the Karate Kid doesn't compare. <laughs> oh, you're gonna give Nev a, a heart attack here. Yeah, okay. I'm, 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 I've got, I've got a bit of a stitch right now just thinking about it. You know, oh. Beverly Hills Ninja is a fun movie. It is not the cult classic. Well, that what the about Karate Kid? Is Dad? Did you watch Three Ninjas? Of course, I watched Three Ninjas. And did Surf you watch Ninjas. Three Ninjas, Neil? No. Three Ninjas was huge here in the U.S. Why haven't you seen that? Because it, it, the fact that, you, you know, a, f- a film needs three ninjas means clearly they weren't that good. Well, they were kids. You'd only need one ninja, you know. I've seen American Ninja. I've seen American Ninja Warrior. I've seen American Ninja. I've seen Ninja Warrior, you know, with one ninja in it. Because, you know, a, a good oh. ninja movie should only need one ninja, not three. No, what's that? Speaking of an American Ninja Warrior, what's that one show? Um, Wipeout? No, it's like Wipeout and American Ninja Warrior, but it's in ch- it's an Asian show. Oh, Extreme Elimination Challenge. Yes! I've seen that, and that show is amazing. I, no, I, I, have, I have what I, I did. I must admit that I do like the Beastmaster. I thought the Beastmaster on Netflix, I thought that was quite good. Me and my L... El- you know what? I, I I liked watching it until I started watching it with my eldest daughter, and every five minutes she's like, "Oh, he's fit," and I'm like, "Excuse me, you're watching this with your father? I don't need to be knowing what men you think are fit." <laughs> All right. To, so to to bring this back to Imperial Assault, <laughs> the fact that it's campaign based, the fact that as you play in the game, your uh, both sides gain experience and unlock new abilities. It is, if you are a gamer of any type, this game is right up your alley and offers tons and tons of hours of, of play right out of the box. And the expansions just add more loved characters uh, to it. You don't need the expansions to have a good time and rarely will any one game play out the same way. Interesting. Okay, so, well, we we're, we're going to find out what it's we're going to find out a what it's like and b what I'm like tomorrow. <laughs> we certainly certainly will. All right, so <laughs> Run DMV loves that the fact that we uh, are our, the the train of thought. You they can follow the train, but the train goes so off course. It's yeah, just I completely hilarious. forgot to throw up the tangent alert slide. I will remember. The thing is, we, we go off on such a tangent so quickly. I don't even have time to think. Oh yeah, tangent alert! Let's everybody know we're off on a tangent here. So, all right. So, do you have a commercial before yours? Yeah, yeah, we could go to a commercial. All right. So, guys, uh, stand, uh, stick around. We'll be right back after these messages with more geeking out with going nerdy right here on Escape Podcast Twitch channel. <laughs> The 
did you know that if you signed up to become a Patreon, you could get tons of rewards? Force Ghost Scotty could do a roster review for you. Neil Andrew Air could share Grand Arena tactics. Or Paul could even help you get maximum stars in Geonosis Territory Battle. Ah, and you even get access into the after show. Sound good? Sign up to be a Patreon today. For as little as $2 a month, you could unlock a ton of potential content and also get closer to the hosts. Head to patreon.com backslash the escape pod to sign up. Hey there, escape Padawans. Everyone's favorite llama here to remind you that the escape pod cast is on social media. That's right. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. So give us a like, give us a follow, and stay up to date on all things in-game and in the escape pod. Our account links are down in the description or on our Discord server in the show links channel. See you on the net! And welcome back to the escape pod geeking out with going nerdy i'm not saying the whole thing because it will take forever and we'll be here forever we need to come up with a really really catchy acronym or something like that is there any way that we can take the first letter out of all of them and make it into a word like down or i don't know so uh, it's it's my turn it's my turn silent g nerdy no I respect your um, uh, opinions on books, but it's my turn now. Okay, Bye. my apologies. Person who's never seen Karate Kid Part One. <laughs> you need, you need, you need some homework too. Yeah, yeah, you need some homework too. I'll, I'll be right over here enjoying my Slim Jim protein to keep myself uh, upright. Okay, right. Okay, so it's 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 you know I know you're going to enjoy this anyway, but it's Mandalorian season two speculation time again, and we've had more news dropping on us and more hype, you know, from um, from the Star Wars universe regarding the Mandalorian. Oh, and he's he's gone. Oh, and he's he's gone. Oh wow. Yeah, he's gone. Oh well. So <laughs> yes. So, so he's now, go get his oh, and he's back again. Oh, he's he's getting. Oh, he's get. <laughs> oh, he's he's brought his Mandalorian stuff. His headless Mandalorian stuff because we can't he's see. He's in him. stealth mode. It's in, ah right, okay, stealth mode. Mm-hmm. So is that Boba or is that Mandalorian? This that's Jango. Stealth mode mug is Jango. Right, okay. I couldn't tell because it kept on disappearing and reappearing. <laughs> So uh, okay, so that's Django. So well, well, the 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 main the the, the main subject of ah uh, there we go. The, the main subject of speculation today is Boba Fett, which again isn't that one. Uh, that's an, have you what, not got a Boba Fett bobblehead that you can wave around in front of us? What is that's, that one? That's not Boba Fett. No, no, no. This is oh, Black Mando. Commando man, commando mando, commando mando, commando mando, ninja mando, ninja mando. I don't, I don't know. But it's it's just thirty inch mando. It's a thirty inch mando. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> at least that's what I told her at the store. So we, ah, oh. um, but yeah, no. So so that, that, I'm, that gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch the, uh, I'm gonna switch the, I'm gonna switch to this. So. The speculation is that so Timothy Oliphant, for those of you that don't know, I don't know you you may have watched him in some stuff. He's he did a uh, he did uh, a, he just, he's done the Die Hard movie. He's played bad guys. He's played good guys. The most uh, I think the best thing that I've seen him in was Deadwood. I don't know if anybody's watched that. Whoa! Now that there's a good t te- now that's a good TV show. If you want to watch good TV about the old West. Yeah, that is definitely a TV show that you want to watch. Um, Deadwood is a big, big major recommendation of mine. Um, And Timothy Oliphant was in it. And basically, uh, he has been cast to wear the armor of Boba Fett. But whether he's going to play Boba Fett is, well, we don't know. Hence hence Speculation City right now. Because um, there is talk 
that he is going to be playing this character called Cobb Vanth from a um, a new canon book um, that was written by somebody else. Say his name. You say his name, Thaddeus. No, I don't remember it. Chuck <sighs> Wendig. The aftermath. Chuck Wendig. Yeah. Yes. The, that <laughs> madman <laughs> Chuck Wendig. <laughs> he did. Uh, he did. Uh, he did. Aftermath. Um, uh, I I can I can I can. But I, I can I can separate the art from the artist. Uh, aftermath, good, you know. Even if I don't like the individual person that created that piece of art, you know, I can still appreciate that piece of art. Um, and one of the characters in it was a uh, you know a sheriff of a Tatooine town. Uh, it was a Tatooine town. Wasn't it was. It? Yeah, it yeah. was. So he was Free a sheriff town. of a Tatooine town, and he was his character's name was Cobb Vanth, and he wore. The armor of Boba Fett, which we, and so so the, the the speculation that's going on right now is, you know, will they bring? Are they bringing Boba the real Boba? Well, you know, will the real Boba Fett please stand up? You know, are they going to be bringing him back and teaming up the real Boba Fett with Mando, who is going to return to Tatooine in season two anyway, to 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 take on this sheriff and reclaim the Mando Boba Fett? I oh, just Oh, it just gives me goosebumps thinking of, you know, an old, you know, I'm obviously, a, you know, an old weary Boba Fett um, being, uh, you know, teaming up with uh, uh, the Mando to, to, to get his, you know, to reclaim the name and reclaim the armor. I think something like that would be totally awesome. What do you think, Thaddeus? Oh, OK, so so first off, you Nev, you've read the aftermath, right? Yes, Siri. Okay, so so for those of you who haven't, the Aftermath series have has these little like asides. It's like the main story, and then in between the main story, there's these little moments of of other story, right? Um, and the the one that's continual between all three books is this Cobb Vanth storyline, where in book one he gets he he goes to the a Mandalorian crawler. Or, uh, a Jawa sand crawler and they find the armor, right? Or someone finds the armor. And then in the second one, um, it's it's the Mandalorian doing something. Or it's it's that guy in the armor doing something. And then in the third one, it's uh, a Rancor, one of Jabba's Rancor guys who raised the Rancor uh, from baby, from little hatchlings or whatever. Um, whatever I, I assume they're hatchlings i don't know how rancors actually birthed um they don't look like mammals you know but they i think they have nipples so maybe i don't know um <laughs> i have nipples can you milk me i i sure could probably if i could milk you i could milk a rancor um <laughs> i don't know how good rancor milk would be <laughs> I wonder if that's the blue milk. <laughs> if that's where they get it from, from the Rancors. And and that's why everyone likes it, because it's like, I'm drinking Rancor milk. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but but the idea is like this there's this character who's become a sheriff. He was a former um I think not a bounty hunter necessarily, but he worked for one of the, these mining guilds that came in to like devastate Tatooine. And he's like, no, screw that. I'm not going to be part of this and like overthrows them and sets up shop as wearing the armor. Right. Um, and I, I, I don't know, man. I, I can, can I say that I've, I've been looking just now at IMDB Um and he is one of few. Timothy Oliphant is one of few people that doesn't have a name given to him. Uh, they're keeping and it under wraps. They, yeah, they're keeping it under wraps. But so he has he, uh, an ins uh, You know, the, the, the insider, the insider scoop is that he has already filmed his scenes. Yeah, I've heard so, that too. Um, so it, you know. It, if he's already filmed his scenes, I, I imagine something like this maybe being a what you know, so maybe just maybe one episode of, of season yeah. two, maybe one or two, because yeah. it, it you know if if you're in and out and that's pretty much yeah. it, you, you're probably only going to be there for maybe one one story, you know, one episode. Yeah. Now, what's funny about this is remember that they're done filming. Yes. Like they're in post production. They're in post production. And, 
and and what we're getting is information from someone or something in the post-production crew, right? Um, I mean, maybe Timothy Oliphant is one that that just leaked the information. It was like, oh, he got drunk at a bar or something like that. I don't know, but um, like he. <laughs> like he is a great character he's a great actor um you're right nev and and he he really is an amazing um an, an amazing actor uh he was in justified uh the crazies if if you guys know that um i know of him from justified but he's in a lot of like one-off things too um and so i, I don't Have you not watched deadwood was i haven't seen Deadwood. Not, no i've heard yeah. They did. Yeah, it was, they, did the, they did the seasons of Deadwood, and then they did a movie like ten years later to to yeah. tie up loose ends. Yeah. So for for me, Timothy Oliphant, I recognized him mainly from Gone in sixty seconds in yeah. Screen Two. Oh I yes, love- Screen Two. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Screen Two. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah. The, the scene where they're talking about sequels. Movie sequels, oh, yeah. the, the the movie oh, yeah. sequels that are good, and he t- points out, he points out that Terminator, you know, m- p- the, the the debate goes that movie sequels tend tend not to be better than the original movie, and then it's a competition between who can list, you know, movies that were, you know, sequel movies that were better than the original. Like um, Die Hard too. Die Hard, get lost. <laughs> no <laughs> chance. But no, the, the movies that they talked the about then were dated three. because Screen Two came out it. in the nineties. So you've got a re- so we've got like twenty years of sequels. So there are a lot of sequels now <laughs> that were better. I mean, like I would say John Wick Two was better than John Wick. Run, Run DMV wants wants you to put up a full screen pic of uh, Timothy Oliphant. Okay, he wants, he wants to see how dreamy this guy is. He's pretty dreamy. He's a he's a pretty dreamy cat. Um, I, so here's, here's the thing. I, this, he could be the, the guy in the Boba Fett armor. Absolutely. Um, he could be Cobb Vanth. I think that would be awesome. Um, I actually thought, and, and I forget the assassin's name, the sniper that's killed on Tatooine the first time. Um, I was oh, under the, the impression. the character that played by Ming-Na? Yeah. Yes. I was under the impression that she was going to meet him. Cobb Vanth. I don't know if you guys remember that. I brought that up at during that episode, um, and he. he I, we we've gone a little bit uh, choppy on the stream there, Neil. Have we? There we go. We're back. We're back to normal. But uh, um, get get one for not from uh, Deadwood though. Get get yeah, one of just Timothy, Timothy Oliphant by himself. Okay, I'll bring something up off. Oh, he he says he knows who that is now. Yeah. So never mind. So like he, he really is a good actor and, and um, I'm, I'm excited about that, but because of Tamora Morrison coming back, I'm, I'm really curious. Um, they could do a lot of stuff with, with him. The fact that he's back doesn't necessarily, and doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be, him currently i still think that they could use footage from like that was left out of the films um i i don't know but um i guys i i that's awesome i saw this the other day and i thought that's cool who's it gonna be um the fact that this is going to be the fact they're in post-production and everyone's still stuck in their house. I still think we're going to get it a little bit earlier than we would have. I don't think we're going to get it in October. I think that we're going to get it in September. Oh, uh, just a month early would be would be yeah. just yeah. I don't want it tomorrow. I'm still binging so much other stuff that <laughs> I have to stop what I'm doing. And but like I even even a couple of weeks earlier, I th- I think that we'll get that. Um, yeah, no, it would be nice to it would be nice to get it earlier because uh, no, just yeah, even if we get you know because then we can then we then, you know then we can start up you know talking Mando again, can't we? Well, of course, of course. So you're you're asking um, Run DMV says is Bubble one hundred percent confirmed? 
Well, not ex the, the Timothy Ol Timothy Oliphant is confirmed. You know who he plays isn't confirmed. The actor that played Django Fett is confirmed. The character that he plays is not confirmed. So the actors in the show have been confirmed, yeah. but the characters that they're playing haven't. So, yeah. yes, we know that they're in. Uh, that's why Paul and me speculated that the ca that he was probably there, that we reckon he was there to play Rex. Mm -hmm. Because we've got the rumour that... Um, Bo-Katan uh, Bo is going to be in Sabine Wren is going to be in that Ahsoka Tano is going to be in Boba F you know so there's so many characters from um, you know from new and old canon that they're bringing back for season two that it's just so much speculation going on at the moment and you've got loads of post-production people probably interns that haven't done anything for ages and you know that and, yeah. and they were there when it was being filmed and it's like oh I'll, I'll take this to Timothy Oliphant's you know, it's like Timothy Oliphant's here. Yeah. And then, and then, you know, they'll, they'll like, you know, get on Reddit or they'll, you know, message one of their insiders at YouTube. It's like, Hey dude, I, I was, you know, I, I took a script for the show to Timothy Oliphant today and I didn't realize he was in the show, but you know, he's there. Oh, can, but they, I don't know what character he's playing. So it's, it's That's the way these rumors are going to come out. But um, I, I'm, the thing is that they're good. It's good, you know. There's, 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 there's a lot. I think there's a lot of excitement um, around season two. So much so that any type of speculation or rumor whatsoever that comes out, it's just going to send send us into a frenzy. Yeah. Um, and well, I, mean, I, I know so a lot of people think that they're being spoiled, but I'm, I'm, I want to know that these, you know, triple A actors and actresses are being cast in the show. Well, okay, Neil. Did we or did we not, Thaddeus, you could confirm this, that we sat there not knowing who was going to be in the next episodes, and we were going, we know that there was a, uh, a ship pilot that was uh, the person who played the voice of Anakin. Um, we found that there was uh, uh, Mr. Krabs played the, <laughs> played the Devarian. <laughs> um tonks played a twilic yep uh, so there was all sorts of of characters that were played by people we didn't even realize yeah and i kind of miss that about this you know the the mandalorian season two all this casting news i i would rather you know see fennec shand and go oh my god that's agent may instead of oh that's timothy oliphant playing the role that i knew he was doing three months ago so i i'm i'm there with you paul and i understand that and and i i, I get it um but at the same and, and and i think that that if we were to not to to walk into episode four or two or seven or whatever and see ahsoka tano for the first time live action and and not know that she was coming the and it would have been the same feeling for someone who didn't watch star wars rebels and know that she had come back but but loved all of clone wars right it's that same concept there's things that there's feelings that you can't i don't know like you you couldn't uh that would be spoiled right <laughs> and i and i think you're right um part of part of what excites me is what I know outside of this. So, so I've heard one of the rumors that I've heard about the Mandalorian and the purpose of the Mandalorian is to use this show, not only as, you know, a testing ground for a proving ground for Disney plus and, and their, their people, their directors, their whatnot. Um, can they create good shows? Can they create things that will keep going? But as a way to introduce other shows, this is the show that is going to launch other spinoffs just yeah. by having a, a so sheer. We're going to get a Kenobi. 
you know, if we get another Kenobi, uh, if we do end up getting this Kenobi series that's talked about, and they flash back to a Qui-Gon, then can we possibly speculate that coming to Disney Plus next month will be cooking with Qui-Gon? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, we need to make sure that that gets licensed real quick. Um because <laughs> then Disney will buy it from us. Yeah, we need a, we need out. a cooking from Qui Gon commercial break, don't we? Don't yeah. we, Paul? Yeah. No, I. But like, I, I just think that it's it's there's a lot of potential for, um, for speculation outside of this, right? The fact that I know that Ahsoka Tano is coming is is cool. Mm-hmm. I, you know, seeing um, Bo Katan. That was huge news. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. First off, she survived. Um, or theoretically, she survives. We don't know that she survived. This could all be flashback, right? Um, theoretically, again, it could all be flashback. Um, but I just, I love that that's what they're doing with this, though. It, like, it really makes me happy to see, see this as a jumping off point for so much more that could be coming um i keep seeing articles and news and and other people say um the mandalorian is what star wars television should be you know is what what disney should be doing with star wars because of you don't hear people say oh i mean you can find people who are not uber fans be like oh it was fine. It was a fun show. I've never heard one person say anything negative. Yeah, no, about I haven't heard anything person. negative. Um, I've heard, you know, people love epi- people love The Mandalorian because it's not episode nine, which <laughs> it's not. But I that's like the biggest like slam that I can hurt I can that I've ever heard, you know. And so. I, I mean, Paul, I understand where you're coming with that. I just, to me, I, I'm so excited for what everything else means in the greater universe that I can look past it. Right, Star so Wars is bigger. Let's than, than... look at something, though, that Disney did, Neil. Mm-hmm. Unless, um, I, I have a, that's a perfect segue, but what do you, what do you have? I don't want to. No, 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 not at all. I was, I was, I was simply going to say that you know that there are literally dozens and dozens and dozens of people working on the sets and working behind the scenes on these shows, and that's why these leaks get out because there is a market for them. And if some mm-hmm. intern or some intern level, uh, you know, staff member of staff or production staff, um, you know, who's got the you know the ear of a YouTuber with two hundred to a million subscribers you know can you know exchange a little bit of information or or, or or a journalist that works at one of those websites that get a few hundred thousand clicks that kind of information is going to be exchanged especially when it is an ip like star wars you know the the big ones tend to get that type of news you know your your star treks your star wars you know your big nerd geek culture type things tend to get those things you know spread out uh, look at all of the stuff that came out about the witcher before the witcher went into production there was so much stuff because you know there are nerds and geeks out there that love the books the video games so lots of lots of stuff gets you know gets out there and i, I just think that that's it's kind of the way we're going to go moving forward with the mandalorian maybe not so much happened before it came out because nobody was sure we weren't 100 you know it, it wasn't popular because nobody had seen it now we've seen it and it's hugely popular. Every season afterwards, we're going to get leaks about characters coming back or potential speculation on this, that, and the other. So uh, it, it's just, I know you don't like it, yeah. but I think we're kind of stuck with it, mate. All right. So let, let's talk Disney for a second and then we're going to move on to, uh, we're going to move on to our Dick of the Week segment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Thaddeus, what do you feel about the fact that Clone Wars Season 7 essentially retconned the entire Ahsoka book because of the
Streaming again. There we go. Yep. We're back up. And we're back. And we're back. Excellent. Okay, so you were saying um, you, you you took it differently. So as I as I I mean I so I read Ahsoka and I think it was one of the last books that I actually sat down and read um, before I switched to Audible almost entirely. <laughs> um, and I've gone back and I've listened to it recently, and that the opening saga, the opening section of of Ahsoka, the novel, is her experience on Mandalore. And it's vague enough, but also specific enough that I feel like it falls, it, it's not out of keeping with, uh, with what we saw in episode seven or uh, season seven. Um, one of the interesting things though, is recently Dave Filoni, and I say recently, I, I recently saw it. I don't know if this was a recent, interview but dave filoni sat down with melissa i think her name is from the star wars show and one of the things that he talked about specifically was um canon versus legends and and he said that he had always looked as um at at the books previously as legends style right great stories told by by great authors but not necessarily canon because there'd be no way to be able to like include everything and say this is how it is um and this came from dave this this is this came directly from dave who took his opinion from george um and and he specifically, I think it was, oh, I want to say it was Tatooine podcast. I, I saw it on Twitter. I can't remember. And, I, and so I watched the clip. Um, but essentially, he, he just said um, they were great stories. And just like any story, um, it can have elements of truth in it. You know, and that's that's why I cling so heavily to uh, to conspiracy theories is because there's elements of truth in it, um, and and so you look at uh, old Sith legends, you look at um, old Republic type stuff, or you look at the New Republic type stuff. How did these things kind of come about? Um, and so, to me, I don't view it necessarily as a retcon. Unless I'm missing something, unless I'm, I'm really missing out on something. Um, but to me, it's, it's m them making an attempt for continuity um, that they didn't have before, right? Everything now has to go through Lucasfilm's uh, core canon crew, right? Um, sorry for the alliteration, but like everything has to go through these guys. And um, and it's it's headed up, if I'm not mistaken, by an Uber fan whose name escapes me, Pablo Hidalgo. Um, I don't know. Nev gave me a look right there when I said that. Yeah. Okay, but but from my from my understanding, Pablo Hidalgo's rise in Lucas is a very fascinating one. Um, he was used as a resource. For writers, for authors, why, for why did you get why did you give him that, Nev? For those yeah, who don't I'm know, curious. No, no, no. It, it, it takes far, far, far too long. Okay, so Nev separate has... the person from the artist. Okay, Nev has iffy feelings or doesn't like Pablo Hidalgo. Just um, he's he's he said some he said things about Star Wars fans I greatly disagree with. Okay, all right. You can't um, you can't I I I I I. Perfect, perfect analogy. I don't like episode eight. Don't like yeah. the movie. I, I'm, but Paul likes episode eight. I wish I was like Paul that I liked episode eight. I wouldn't insult him, and he wouldn't insult me for criticizing episode eight. Not for when that. people criticize Star Wars. When fans of Star Wars criticize things within the Star Wars universe that they don't like. I don't like it when 
um, members of Lucasfilm, people who are part of the establishment, then call names or insult fans for expressing an opinion of something that they dislike. I wouldn't do that. I would never call someone a person a name. If someone said the EU books are all crap, I'd be like, well, I think you're wrong for reason X, Y, and Z, but I wouldn't insult that individual person just as I would expect them not to insult me if I expressed an opinion for not liking something, you know? We all have likes and dislikes within the Star Wars universe. I would not personally attack attack or insult a fan for expressing an opinion about something that they don't like. So when people who are part of Lucasfilm insult fans for expressing opinions of distaste for things that they don't like, I then don't like that individual person. That makes because sense. I think go. it's that, over the top. That was a good. That, that was, was a good yeah. way of putting it. Very eloquent. Like I personally love Rose Tico and Amal and Holdo, and think that the trip to Canto Bight was was not unnecessary. It but, wasn't. It wasn't. And I disagree with you, but I'm not about to insult you. <laughs> it was not unnecessary. I, so, so I I will say I've read other books with 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 Rose Tico, and she hasn't really grown on me emelyn holdo on the other hand uh resistance she is a reborn, character then. <laughs> yeah <laughs> resistance reborn um there's another one uh i want it might be shadow uh queen shadow that talks about uh i, I don't remember which one it was but there was one that uh holdo really like her character is better developed in extended canon. Yeah, it's she's not... also in the Leia book, which is print. Oh, which yeah, is... that's yeah. what I was thinking. The Leia book. Yeah, is it Bloodlines? I can't remember, but there's it's one of them, and she's. It... Hang on a minute. I think I've got that. Yeah, it's it's there's one where it's very. What do you call it? It's it's when she's younger and she meets Leia for the first time. And then you see her a little bit later in life before the events of episode eight. And so again, the character is, is much better developed than that Rose Tico is. And like Cobalt Squadron just didn't do it for me. I, I I couldn't... Before the awakening? No, 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 no. It, well, I, I don't know. I haven't read that one. Um, but this one is, this one is uh, here. I've got it on my phone. Um, it's Bloodlines, or it is. Uh, it, it's Queen's Shadow because Queen's that's, Shadow. The, okay. that's okay. the book where she learns to be a senator. Okay, that's then that's yeah. Okay, so the thing about it though is one. Queen of the Empire, different book entirely. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think Neil's just pulling down books out of, yes. out of random just, just to show point. all the EU books he has now. Yes, I so ah. but but <laughs> Paul. So back to the back to the original question. Um, do we know that it's Rex's armor that he has when he's older in Rebels? I thought he. I thought he talked about. There was a video that I watched. He talked about uh, he definitely has the helmet because Ezra picks up his helmet. Yeah, the helmet's correct. The helmet's accurate. So, but we don't see Rex's helmet though in episode in the last episode. It, we see the helmet that's hanging from the thing is Echoes, right? Right, but Re- but Rex's helmet is in Rebels. But what I'm saying is it's not in Clone Wars. And so it he could still have the helmet. Plus Rex got a little fat, to be honest. Yeah, he did, you know, he did get a little bit portly, didn't he? He well, went a bit husky. I mean, so he wouldn't he have been wearing the full guys. full I mean, armor. He probably wasn't eating his vegetables, right? And he wasn't living on the Imperial rations that, you know. Sucked. Well, they were eating them great big bloody worm things, weren't they? Yeah, those have to be very well marbled. Um, yeah, they. I'm. 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 I'm going to say that those things are very, very high in fat. Yeah. So yeah, a little but, chunky. So, basically, what you're saying, and because we need to need to get to the uh, get to the finale here. Yes. But basically, what you're saying is that we did, um, we did end up seeing 
that they did retcon the Ahsoka book because it was tech and you're indifferent to it. Yeah. I I I think the way that they did it doesn't feel like a retcon. Um I I think it was purposely done. All right. All right. So Neil. Yes. Let's uh let's get the uh let, let's move along to the dick of the week. Yes. Who is your nomination for the dick of the week? That my nomination for Dick of the Week is, and, and I'm I'm sticking with the car park thing, and I'm sticking with the car park thing because it happened the other day. It was raining. It was absolutely pissing it down with rain. Um, went to the uh, went to the supermarket because we had to get some things, and because it's raining, people think it's all right to just drive their cars up and just sit at the entrance. And I'm and it, it just you're like, oh my God, it's a little bit of rain, you know. It's just a small bit of rain. Oh, boo hoo! Oh no, you're gonna get out of your you're gonna get out of your car and you're gonna get a little. W- Take an umbrella with you. You know it's raining before you go to the damn supermarket. That doesn't give you the right to block everybody from getting into the bloody supermarket in the first place. Don't park your cars in front of the damn doors just because it's bloody raining. There. So that's entrance my nomination standing. for Dick of the Week is people that deliberately block the entrance to the supermarket with their car because it's raining and they don't want to get wet. All right. Entrance campers has been entered. Thaddeus, what's your Dick of the Week? I, I first have to say that I do again feel like Nev's Dick of the Week is definitely a personal attack on me. <laughs> <laughs> We've had two shows... <laughs> As as an avid sandal wearer and someone who hates shoes, I have been guilty of that. Um, my dick of the week is comes actually from uh, yesterday with my family. I watched the movie Scoob, which is the newest Scooby Doo movie. It was the one that was meant to be in theaters, which I think probably still is now that theaters are back open. Um, my dick of the week is whoever the casting director for that film is. <laughs> who didn't cast Matthew Lillard as the voice of Scooby uh, of Shaggy. Shaggy. What? They didn't. No. Why not? He was perfect in the other one. He's done every other one for the last 20 years. You've gone Roboto. You've gone Roboto on us. Give your lead a shake. Give your microphone lead a shake. With my microphone looking vaguely inappropriate, I'm not sure I want to do that. <laughs> you, you've gone Cylon again. Have yeah. I? Yeah, Have you've I gone Cylon. Gone robot, Mr. Robot. You've very specifically gone Cylon by your command. Okay, so so yes, the casting director for Scoob, who screwed over Matthew Litton, and I have nothing against Will Forte. Last Man on Earth is one of the best shows out there, except that it didn't finish. Um, But, I mean, Matthew Lillard is Shaggy Norval Rogers. Norval Shaggy Rogers. Sorry, I got it backwards. All right. I'm going to save you, Thaddeus. Unplug, replug, do what you need to do. Set it back up to uh, set it back up because it's going to change your input yeah. on uh, new zoom. acquisitions yeah you're gonna have to reconnect it on zoom unless we just lost them all there we go all right now uh my dick of the week is uh wrong way shoppers so you go oh. in i don't know if this is the same uh i, I don't know if it's the no, same it way at, at your local menards yep we've we've got it uh, we've got it we've got it at our menards and we've got it in our myers Okay, and, and they have it also at the local Walmart. Yes, yeah. the arrows but are on the floor. There, there are arrows on the floor. Big red signs that say, do not enter. And so you're trying to practice safe social distancing. And we don't hear Thaddeus. I, I, I see him. Uh, ch- I wasn't ch- making any noise. Oh, you weren't making noise. Now you sound normal, by the way. <laughs> but okay. there are... If you drove down a street the wrong way, you would crash. I just want to take my cart if they're going the wrong direction and go, oops, sorry. It just no. pisses me off that people are so inconsiderate to not follow that. Also, 
get, this was before social distancing. You, there are two aisles in, you know, there's a big aisle in the middle and there's, there's product down the, down the, uh, um, down the middle of that gigantic aisle way that's in between all the aisles. People that go on the left-hand side and take up the whole darn way, you're, okay, I, I don't mean to be the Murica guy, but Murica. you are, you drove to get here. You were on the right side of the road. Stay on the right side to allow people to get through unless you're stopping to look at something on the right-hand side. Wrong way shoppers piss me off. Yeah, no, that, that is a, that is a worthy nomination, absolutely. Get Ten the poll minutes. up. Ten minutes again, on this poll. And again, yet another personal attack from the members <laughs> of the Escape Podcast. There's I, ten I, minutes on the poll. Go look, go uh, vote. Is it entrance campers? Is it Shaggy's voice casting? Or is it wrong way shoppers? You guys can vote if, once, if, or if, if you want to spend twenty five bits, you get to vote again. I'll tell, I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something now. If if my mum was watching this, she she would be voting with you, Paul, because we 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 were in we were we were both in Menards, not Menards. We were in Myers, and and that's exactly what people were doing. They were going the wrong way down the aisles, and it's like, come on, dude, seriously, stop it. You know, if you're just walking, you know, if you don't have a trot, if you're just walking down because you want to nip down an aisle and grab something, that I don't have an issue with that. But it's when you've got a great big whopping car. That's what I have a, you know, yeah, I would agree with you there. And 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 I will say that I'm not the guy that, that parks his car in the middle. Um, but I will also point out that I was doing most of the shopping for my family. And for three weeks... I think for the last three weeks, I didn't notice that there were arrows on the floor. Or maybe three weeks ago, I noticed that there were arrows. But before that, I had no idea. And so in my defense, I am not observant. And so Ignorance I of the law is no defense, young Thaddeus. Sure it is. No, it isn't. Sure it is. No, it isn't. <laughs> it's, and it's not ignorance of the law. It's ignorance of new customs. And that's, it's a new custom. I, Paul, I. It's a social convention. It's a, con, it's a social convention. It's a social and, convention. And, yeah. Yeah. And like gift giving say, or, you know, or gift opening, giving. holding a door open, you know, it's a social convention. Yeah. No, I, I will say that I am always, I'm very, very unobservant. I remember um, one year there was a, a lady who bought my wife some sparkling uh, cider Um and so I, I was like, oh, hey, you know, she got us some sparkling cider. Let me, re let me give her a gift that I had received as well. And so I took some sparkling cider and gave it to her as she was standing by our doorway. Little did I know that we had, or little did I realize that we had had that sparkling cider wrapped up, decorated for Christmas for over a year. <laughs> And she was the one who gave it to us in the <laughs> You re-gifted to someone who gifted you what you re-gifted. Yes. <gasps> that is, My that is. My wife was so mad at me. You numpty. You, oh, you broke the cardinal rule. When re-gifting, you don't re-gift to the person that gifted to you in the first place. Yeah. I had no idea. No idea. And... <laughs> <laughs> and my wife, she's like, I pulled that out so that I wouldn't re-gift that. I didn't know. <laughs> you know? And, 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 and it still said to the Brodericks from Kathy, right? Yep. Yep. Oh my yeah. god, it still had the tag on as well? It did! You didn't <laughs> check the tag? tag? I didn't know! Oh, well, hang on a I minute, how could you not check the tag? You would have been wanting I... to write on that, you know... From Thaddeus to whoever. No, so I don't put tags on gifts. I just want people to know that it's from me. <laughs> and so I just assume I'm that important to them that they're like, oh, this weird wrapping paper is clearly from Thaddeus. Um, there, no one else would use this birthday wrapping paper for a Christmas present. And, and so booyah, or vice versa, a Christmas present, Christmas wrapping paper for a birthday. Um, I, d I just didn't realize it. And 
like because I don't think of it, my I, I will say my heart was in the right place. I love this woman. She was such a great person. I say was. We just don't interact with her very often. My wife does. I don't see her very often. Like <laughs> such a good person. Your wife keeps her away from you. She hmm. probably does. Um, she's like such a good person, and and I felt so bad that I that we didn't have anything for her yet. That I ran to my kitchen. I'm like, we've got stuff, right? I'm gonna give her something. And the first thing that I noticed, I was like, oh, a pretty package, boom. And my heart was in the right place. My brain never is, ever. So, <laughs> okay. I think uh, everybody's got, voted, haven't they? Got about three, four, uh, three to four minutes left on the, uh, um, <laughs> on this whole. Uh... I think, I think we, I think we've got a winner though. Yeah, I think yeah. there's a clear winner. There's a clear there's winner there. The second week in a row that I've got the. Dick. Yeah, I know, Paul's. I know, Thad. We need to come up with some better dicks of the week. I know. I thought for sure that more people would be upset by this whole Shaggy Gate. Well, um, maybe maybe more people would have been if everybody else had watched the movie, but nobody's watched the movie, so so there's no there's nowhere there's no way to be outraged without hearing who this new Shaggy is. That's true. Hey, on a side note, um, if you guys haven't seen Sonic, it's pretty fun. Not seen it yet. It's pretty fun. Um, it's not like the best movie ever. You won't be like go in and be like, oh, this is amazing. But like, I, I enjoyed it. We went to a local drive-in, um, and it was funny because they did the six feet apart, uh, and so you couldn't park next to someone in front of or behind someone. So it was like wide spaces. And But it was cool. We watched, we went, went and watched Sonic, and it was, it was a lot of fun. So... Now I, I can I can watch stuff again on Netflix because I got to the end of Parks and Recreation Season 7, so... Yay, I can start binging on something else now. <laughs> uh, yes. Wendy of you wants to know if he should watch Sonic before he watches Karate Kid. No, yes. no. You watch the Karate Kid 1, then you watch Karate Kid Part 2. You can skip 3, but then you've got to go right to Season 1 of... Um, you've got to go right to Season 1 of Cobra Kai. Once you get to the end of Season 1 of Cobra Kai, you will, you will want to binge watch Season 2 immediately. Cascade, we see your comment. That's all yes. I'm gonna say. And, well, I got, I gotta say the the more, uh, and and you're right. It, that's a good thing that that wasn't what was wrapped up. But the the more terrifying thought there is that that thing would have been sitting on my counter for a year, and that and that this woman gave it to you guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, yeah. <laughs> terrifying right. so are we calling are we calling the poll close yeah we'll call it we'll call it yeah all right so for for the second week in a row i have brought the biggest dick to the table yes yeah. paul is the dick of the week for the second all week right all right uh thaddeus uh, let, let's uh let's do this uh how do people uh what you know i know people are gonna also be able to watch this on your channel but yes. for for people that are watching the video on demand on our channel, how do people find you? You can find me at my YouTube channel at Going Nerdy, or just look up Going Nerdy on YouTube. You'll find me. Um, or you can check me out at Instagram or Twitter at Real Going Nerdy, and where I post other random stuff, typically sassy responses on Twitter, and you know. I geek out a lot when authors notice me. <laughs> hmm. um, or you can find me at a anywhere the Tepcon can be found. I've got to say that I'm going to do my best to do what I can do to be on the next Fortnite because I feel like I, I can do a lot more damage now that I have a microphone, llama. <laughs> So hmm. the the Nanner Bunch rides on Run DMV eleven, uh, Twitch TV slash Run DMV eleven, um, and you guys can uh, guys can find that uh, the Nanner Bunch as we call ourselves because we run around with banana backpacks. We will be uh, doing that. I'll be a little bit late to the party. I think Llama will be a little bit late to the party as well. Um, but 
the the quack pack quack we pack. also are known as hmm. when we when we all dress up in our in our duck costumes and and get shot at the massacre always happens at risky reels if you're a <laughs> So for those who are looking for us, we are twitch.tv slash escape podcast. No the, just escape podcast. Uh, we, we, are, uh, we do things almost uh, every single weekday. Uh, Monday, I host a Jackbox night. Tuesday is this. Wednesday, for the foreseeable future, will be, um, will be Imperial Assault with, uh, with Neil. On Thursdays, I run Marbles, and then we throw it over to Run DMV's uh, Quack Pack. And then on Fridays is the Escape Pod cast, the, the big, uh, the thing that started it all. And um, we're very grateful for you guys just spending time with us. We're also available on YouTube. Uh, we are still pushing for 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. And there are a lot of fun things, including Neil getting his hair cut, uh, there's a $50 gift card for uh, for people that enjoy the game that I'm not allowed to say on this show. Um, and lots of stuff. See, you thought you had me, Neil. <laughs> I mean, Thad's been wearing a, a shirt with that, a uh, hoodie with that uh, logo on it all this show. I'm just saying. Yeah, but he didn't say anything about the game that will not be discussed. So that's why I tried to trick him into doing it. And then, I will uh, send you to the naughty corner before the end of this month. <laughs> Mark my you words. You will not get me there. Guys, thank you so much. Neil, uh, what are you doing on uh, on your, on the Nev channel? Um, well, the, just, um, uh, the, 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 my, my, my regular channel has now, um, I have uh, um, returned Pom Pom Tastic from whence it came. So Pom Pom Tastic has returned home. Um, so all GAC and all future content from the Pom Pom Tastic account has returned to the Nev, um, and will be remaining there until I can't be bothered to play the game anymore. Or CG does something so stupid that the game that will not be mentioned goes in the pooper. All this is uh, subject to change and under construction. With that being said, guys, thank you so very, very much for joining us for this special edition of uh, The Escape Pod, Geeking Out with Going Nerdy. This will be posted 24 hours from now on Going Nerdy's channel, and uh, we are uh, you'll be able to catch a uh, replay of last week on his channel in probably about an hour. Yep. You know, I have to upload it. <laughs> it's, a, it's three gigs. <laughs> but guys uh stay tuned we'll see you guys tomorrow if you're w interested in that or friday if you just want to see the podcast for more the escape pod cast have a good night be nice to each other damn it what's going on where the hell are we paris thank you for pressing the self-destruct button attention this is colonel sanders in forward command abandon ship abandon ship all personnel proceed to escape pods This ship will self-destruct in exactly 10 seconds. Counting down. 10, 9, 8, 6. 6? What happened to 7? Just kidding. 3, 2, 1. Have a nice day. Thank you. Hello, friends. This is Thaddeus from Going Nerdy. The Escape Podcast was filmed in front of a live studio audience full of tweaked out murder bears. Sit, Ubu, sit. Good dog. <laughs>